Imagine sitting here on this very spot 3,000 years ago and suddenly hearing a noise and a shouting and trumpets and drums. And you look up towards the road over here and you see the royal entourage coming. And inside where I'm sitting right now, this is the entrance of the gate of the time of King Solomon. And King Solomon himself and his entourage might have gone through this gate in a stream and a noise. And here we are today in the year 2020. It's kind of surreal to imagine that 3,000 years ago, the very man who built the first temple walked on the same ground over here. We are literally walking in the footsteps of our ancestors. And that's what it means to be in Israel. It's a spiritual experience. It's an all body experience. All of our senses, we can walk it, we can touch it, we can smell it, we can feel it, we can taste it. And there's no replacement for that experience. Now, here we are, beautifully built gate over here, lovely stones. They haven't moved in 3,000 years, even though the construction is dry construction, no cement. Despite the earthquakes, it's still standing strong. You can see the different chambers where the guards would wait trying to stop people walking into the city itself. It was strong, it was fortified. We're not here to talk about these massive stones. We're here to talk about a little stone that was found right over here in one of these chambers. This stone, a stone this size, was where the famous Geza calendar was written on. It's about this big. The original is in Istanbul in the Archaeology Museum where I was last week. But it was found over here and what makes it so special it was one of the earliest Hebrew inscriptions. Judaism, unlike any other ancient faith, specialized and emphasized universal education, not just for the boys, but also for the girls. In fact, the most holy prayer in Judaism is the Shema prayer. And one of the lines is, You should teach your children well. Crosby stills and Ash later paraphrased that to teach your children well. Right from the Shema. And what was this on this inscription, on this shard, which is an ostracon with an inscription on? Nothing biblical, but a simple calendar, a writing exercise on what you plant in each month of the year, like a poem about agriculture, because agriculture was super important for ancient Israelites. But most interestingly, at the bottom of the calendar was three letters in Hebrew, Aleph, Bet, Yud, which is the word Avi. And you could tell it wasn't written by an expert scribe. You could tell those corrections. It was written on soft, soft chalk. And the theory is it was written by a schoolboy called Avi and he was practicing his writing exercises. So imagine 3,000 years ago, one of the guard's sons was sitting in this gate chamber here, bored and practicing his school homework, writing in Hebrew. And here we are 3,000 years later, not just ancient ruins. If you look over the valley, the beautiful modern city of Kameh Yosef, a modern town on the other side of the valley. Here Jews lived, and here Jews lived. Dame Ayimbata, know where you come from. This is our ancient history where we're deeply rooted into our land, into these very stones. History, her story, our story. Malana Talech, and where have we come to? 3,000 years later, the Jews are back in their beautiful, fertile land, living, laughing, and loving.